Scandinavian tubing. This is the uh, speckled one. I'll cut maybe an inch or so. I like to melt the back end of the tube. Okay, just like that. And now I'm going to take about maybe three quarters of an inch of the large Scandinavian tube, same color, kind of that speckled uh, pearl color. I'm going to insert it in. So we've got a step tube there. Okay. At this point, I'm going to stick it onto my vice adapter, pardon me, my uh, extra large tapered pin. And I'm just going to push back until it won't push anymore. Not going to twist, not going to smash it in, just slow, easy pressure until it's on there. I'm just going to tighten it up again. We're ready to tie. All right, so you can see with this uh, tapered pin now, everything's wedged right up. Uh, nothing spins. It's secure in my, the jaws of my vise, and we're ready to tie. Okay, with any step tube here, uh, I always secure it with some thread right at the joint. So I'm going to just wrap a few loose wraps until the thread's attached. And then I'm going to hold the whole thing and do a few compression wraps. And what you'll see is you can put a lot of, quite a bit of pressure on the thread. And as the thread compresses around the larger tube, it will cinch up the whole thing. Okay. You can see it's sliding still a little bit. Definitely need some more compression on that. Alright, and you can see now it's it's securely attached. Alright, I'll take my thread back most of the way. And the good thing with this extra large diameter uh, sparkle tubing is it's got obviously a bigger inside diameter so you can put a bigger hook into the back of this. Uh, we never use junction tube with the extra large stuff. We use a, uh, a tube or pardon me a hook with a big eye and it'll slide right in the back and because you've got the bigger tube with the larger diameter you can fit much bigger hooks so even a 2 aught 3 aught whatever you might be using for pike or muskie or huge salmon uh, works a lot better. All right, hey, we're gonna tie an uh, ostrich intruder today, and I've got this. Uh, this feather's already been hacked up a little bit, but this is our ostrich spay. We're gonna take a few fibers, and again, some guys will do this with a dubbing loop. I like to just kind of put it in in groups of five or six barbs. I'm gonna go just three clumps around around the tubes. And no technical words here. Like I said, I just call them clumps. Uh, best thing about this taper pin too is you can spin your tube and then reapply pressure. Uh, you can also use your rotary too. Um, I'm not going to worry about the rotary. I've just gotten so used to tying with with uh, uh, I guess cheap vices uh, back when I started that just rotating the tube works best for me. It's just what I'm used to. All right. So I've got three, three clumps of the ostrich spay. Okay, I'm just going to add in a little bit of pearl, pearlescent flashaboo, uh, just a few strands for the back of the back of this fly. And I'm just going to tie them in at one, one spot. You can get fancy and put them all around the tube if you want, but I'm just going to stick with one. All right. At this point, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of a rib. Could be a uh, oval tinsel or flat tinsel. I'm just going to go with flat because it happens to be right in front of me. Um, and tie that in. body of uh, hot pink floss on this. Okay. 
and what I often do is I'll double up the strands so even if it's four strand floss like this stuff uh, when I double it up if I don't make a mess of it here there we go it makes eight strand floss way better for covering these big tubes and I'm going to cover about half of this body with this hot pink floss and as with tying any tubes the, the bigger the diameter tube the more material you're going to need to cover that tube so about halfway there and tie it off alright I'm going to take that rib and just counterwind it just to secure that floss a little better I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the ostrich spay, a few barbs, pretty much what I did with the tail. Um, and this time I want it to go as long as the tail, so you're going to need longer fibers for that. And just like the pink in the back, I'm going to put it in in three clumps of about five or six strands each. Okay. Right, at this point I'm going to add uh, some turkey flats in there and um, as we mentioned on the site uh, we brought these turkey flats in for a specific reason for a couple specific reasons one is to uh, add more structure to the underwing of some tubes uh, so these feathers they're big um, this one wasn't dyed very well that's why I'm using it and not putting it on the shelves uh, we're going to pull back the fibers for about well, two thirds of the feather, so there's just a little bit of fluff left. Okay. Just a little bit of fluff at the bottom, maybe even a bit more taken off. So I've got the top fibers and then a little fluff. I'm going to pull back the tip okay. and I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Now, when I wind this, because the stem gets very thick here, you're going to naturally feel where you can't really turn it very much anymore without the stem breaking or something bad happening. So you're going to go, you're going to wrap it as far as you can uh, until you can't wrap anymore without something happening to the, to the stem of the feather. And what that'll do is it kind of build, builds up a little bit of a mound there that's going to help keep the rest of the wing up. Okay, so I'll wrap forward. and I can just feel it getting tight you can see the stems getting thick and that's where you want to quit you don't want to wrap it any hard, any further than that and you can see the stem gets incredibly thick and brittle near the end so taking it too far will not do, any, not do anything good for your fly okay, I'm going to pull back all the fibers and you can see now how if I had to use just schloppen here, this the schloppen would have laid down pretty flat. These fibers, now there's a little bump there, okay? And these fibers are much stronger than schloppen. You can see how they're sticking up instead of just laying flat back. Even if I wet it down a little bit, they stay st stuck up pretty well. Okay, so that's gonna make your wing, instead of your wing going flat down like that, keep the wing up all the way around the fly. At a better angle. All right, at this point I'm going to go back in with pink ostrich, and same thing I did with the tail. Put a few few uh, fibers in around the tube. Okay. 
this is some more pink there. I'm going to go in with a little bit more blue. And you know, this, this type of tube I'm doing right now, it's, it's almost a process of layering layering feathers to make the wing that's going to be seen on the final fly. It's, it's just layer upon layer of fibers, mostly ostrich, but also the, the turkey flats, of course, too. And you're just building, building layers in the wing. All right. All right, at this point I still have a lot of fly to go. I want to finish the fly on, this, on this, the large Scandinavian tubing, not the extra large stuff here. So I've got some distance to make up here. At this point, I'm going to put in some marabou. I'm not going to put a whole ton of marabou in, like, like an Alaska boo where you're using three or four or five marabou feathers. I'm just going to go with one, just to make up some of that distance. You can see compared to the turkey flats, if this is the turkey flat, you can see the difference in the fiber. Here the marabou is very wispy and light, where the turkey flat, way more structure to the barb. And unlike the turkey flat, you can see as soon as I get this wet, just with a little saliva, it lays totally flat against the rest of the wing. All right. Hey, at this point, I'm going to add a little bit more flash. And as most tires know, uh, flash is a personal preference. Some guys go with tons. I've actually got a friend that never uses it, thinks it scares the fish. And then we all have the friend that makes a fly that looks more like a Christmas tree than it does a fly. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it, so I've got one bunch of flash in the tail, one bunch of flash that's gonna be near the head here, and that's it. Alright, I'm going to put another layer of pink on here, pink ostrich spay. And again, just in clumps around the tube. And when they're in a clump like that, what you can do is you can just put your finger and kind of wiggle. And it will move them around the tube a little bit more. Okay. And then a, a few more securing wraps. All right. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to add just a little bit more blue to this. A couple of wild fibers there, but of course, once they're wet, they'll calm down. All right, now this pattern I'd like to finish it a couple of different ways. Uh, a lot of times I'll use guinea fowl uh, for the final collar. Um, and in fact, that's what I'm gonna do today, I think. All right, ready for the guinea fowl. Uh, I've got some guinea fowl that we dyed royal purple, and I'm gonna try and find the biggest feather in here. This is our extra large guinea fowl. 
There's a nice big one. Right. And I'll trim all the fuzziness out and tie it in by the tip just like we did the tricky flats. And I'll wrap, moving slightly forward as I go. Okay, trim it off. And pull back the fibers. You know what, I'm going to use two, two guinea fowl feathers. Just use that little extra kick, kick at the end. Again, I'll try, to f I'll try and find a big one. Or the biggest ones. Hey, there's a nice one. You'll notice my tube was slipping a bit too, so that just means you have to put a little more pressure on that tapered tube. Or pardon me, that tapered pin. Tying in by the tip again. Okay, and we'll tie it off and then pull everything back. And another fly that we tie that I'm really not con not really too worried about the big head on it because it is such a big fly. But I know I've got several tying friends that would want a smaller head on this fly. Okay, just tidy everything up so we have a nice head that we can varnish. Yeah, so basically what that guinea does too is that guinea just kind of it layers over all the sections that you tied in uh, and just kind of tidies everything up all right now with with uh, most of our flies I like to add in jungle cock since it's laying here and it looks pretty definitely not necessary of course but we'll add some in anyway okay, and on these on the uh, ostrich intruder space is what we call these. Uh, I like to tie in the jungle cock quite long, so we'll just marry the two wings up just for distance. And you know, a good almost two inches of jungle cock there. And this is the last step, just tie it in. Quite a few wraps though, you don't want to lose the jungle cock when it's flying through the air. And again, just tighten everything up, make that nice tapered head. All right, we'll finish that off with a whip finish. And since you put too much, so much time into this fly, uh, two or three whip finishes is a better idea. At this point, I'll pull it off my tapered vise or tapered needle. Hey, I'm pretty happy with the looks of that. And you can see because of the layering of the wings, you got a really full fly, really full bodied fly that's going to hold its shape in the water because of that turkey flat we used uh, and the other materials too, of course. At this point, I'll just cut the front tube about a sixteenth. And I'll melt the lip, 
slowly so it curls nicely back on itself. Alright, so we've got a nice lip going there. And you can see this fly, you know, basically there's not really a top or a bottom to it. It we lay the jungle cock in sideways right parallel to the tube or right alongside the tube I should say and there's not a top or a bottom it's it's a fly that just kinda kinda presents itself in the water from any angle the same way alright okay. we'll just varnish up the head there just uh, and definitely a fly that you've put this much effort into. I mean, this isn't a, an Adams or a Caddis fly that you can whip out 30 or 40 in an hour. This this fly will take, you know, sometimes sometimes it takes them 20, 30 minutes to make one of these, and a lot of uh, material invested in it. You definitely want to. I well, you don't have to, but. One coat of one coat of uh, varnish isn't enough for me. I'll let this totally dry, and come back two or three times and really get a, a hard, hard, hard varnish. Hey, okay, there we go. That's the ostrich intruder spay.